Heyo everybody, Haku here with another anime review. This time around, I'm gonna do a movie. I'm gonna do the Wata Ten movie. Uh, Watashi ni Tenshi ga Mayorita, uh, Precious Friends is the name of the- it's the movie title. Sorry, I always call it Wata Ten, so it's like, well, what was the full title again? But I really, really, really enjoyed this one. Uh, I went into it thinking, you know, it's a slice of life comedy. So I'm used to anime movies being for like Battle Shonen and stuff, and when you get those movies, they're kind of roughly all the same in structure, but I'm like, how do you really do a movie for a slice of life comedy? But I was blown away. I thought it was really genuine and emotional, and what you get out of the actual like main story itself in season one is kind of also what you're going to be getting out of the movie. I'm going to talk about the plot points of the movie because I think for some of my reviews, it's best to like withhold as much as possible and just use the reviews as a recommendation. But for some others, I think it serves the review better for me to talk about some of the plot points so I can discuss why I liked it so much. And that's what I'm going to be doing for this one. So if, I mean, it's a slice of life comedy, there's like not a bunch of huge spoilers or anything, but if you are somebody who doesn't want to know anything about it, just know that I really, really enjoyed it and would recommend it, but also say that it's not for everybody. If you're not into lolly stuff, it's probably not for you. Though again, it's one of those things where it's a slice of life comedy. I wouldn't personally say there's really a lot of fan servicey stuff um, in Wata Ten as a whole. I mean, if anything, there's nothing like overtly sexual, I would think. Um, but if you don't like that kind of stuff, then it's fair to say it's not for you. Also, there are definitely Yuri undertones, overtones, even. Uh, so if, again, you're not really into that, again, maybe not your thing. But even saying that, you know, Yuri overtones are there, especially between, like, Noah and Hinata, it's like, it would be a big stretch to call this a romance series. It's very much slice of life comedy. The movie's called Precious Friends. It's about friends. It's about friendship and relationships between characters. And if you want to read any more into it than that, it's left a bit vague. But it is at the very least on the surface about friendship and it's really sweet and endearing and it's also very funny. The comedy's really good. Um, I, again, not for everybody, but I would recommend it. So to get into actually talking about it a bit, I watched Wata 10, the first season when it first came out, just now getting around to watching the movie. And what I get from the movie is kind of what I got out of the series. When I first watched the series, um, it's very cute. I love it. it. The animation was really, really good. The designs are really nice. And it was very funny. But sometimes that's all you really get out of a... Um, out of a slice of life comedy. Sometimes you just get, okay, it's just a gag comedy. But a lot of times, there's some deeper character work going on, there's some deeper story going on, and I think Wata Ten was one of those. There was really some deeper story going on with the way that the characters worked. Uh, Miyane Miyako isn't really like your stereotypical shut-in, like she still goes to school and everything, but she hides away just making her clothes and everything for, um, for, what is it, cosplay and all. And she kind of stays to herself, but she also does have somewhat of a social life. She just tends to avoid it and gets really nervous with it. Um, so she's not like too over the top stereotypical in that way. Um, and Hana, of course, is a character who, her mom's not like abusive or neglectful or anything, but she's somebody who never really had many friends or did much of anything really never opened up to anyone and what I got out of the series at least from the main characters because again there's the characters surrounding them like Noah and Hinata who are very good too but out of the main like Ahana Miyane duo what you got out of it was each of them are people who came into each other's lives who push them or who push each other to go outside of their comfort zone and do things they wouldn't have done in the past. So they both push each other to do and try new things, but also kind of support each other and see each other in ways that the other characters don't seem to see them. Um, so it's like a really good, well-written relationship that I think is really, really, really nice. And 
the movie continues to carry that on. Again, the comedy bits are very funny, but it's really, really about the relationship between two of the two of them on a deeper level. And I feel like the first season of the anime, at least from my memory of it, again, it's been a while since it first came out, like what, 2018, 2019 maybe? Um, but I felt like that was mostly framed from Miane's point of view most of the time, where the movie felt really framed from Hana's point of view, especially when we're literally with Hana's point of view, seeing all the different things that Miane has done for her and how Miane goes out of her way and does things that she wouldn't normally do for her. And it's like a really, really well-written friendship um, or relationship. And I like too that Again, the main basic sort of premise behind it is that the three moms go off vacation at a hot spring and Miane and the five main girls, you got Noah, Hinata, Hana, and I think Kanon and Kiyori are the other two's name, but I, again, I don't remember them doing as much in the anime. Uh, the five of them go off with Miane to visit Hana's grandmother, stay there. They go around doing different touristy stuff, and it's just really cute slice of life stuff. The comedy, again, I've probably said it multiple times, is very funny. And we just see the relationship between those two building up. That's very good. It's nice that we get into the grandmother and her character, and we see that she had a friend who was much older. And they stayed friends well into old age, so it's like, even though there's an age gap between... Um, Miane and Hana. They're characters who could, again, just grow old as best friends and everything. Um, again, or for obvious reasons, it is left very vague if there is anything more to it than that. Very, very obvious reasons it is uh, left vague if there's any more to it than that. But at the very least, their friendship is incredibly well written. I thought the Noah and Hinata stuff was so funny too, where the entire time, this is where there is some like actual real romantic overtones thrown at you, uh, with Noah having a huge crush on Hinata, Hinata being absolutely oblivious to it, and Noah just trying so, so, so hard to impress her throughout the runtime and completely failing the romance checks at every opportunity. Uh, that was really funny. There are a lot of really funny running gags, like the wordplay jokes from the grandmother that everybody else finds kind of dumb, but Hinata finds hilarious. Some moments where Hinata, or like, Noah's like, Hinata, you're acting like a child. Hinata's like, I am a child. They're like, oh yeah, that's right. Um, it, it was just generally very good. I feel like I'm rambling on at this point. I got through most of uh, what there is to say about it. But there were some really emotional moments for me, especially towards the end. But I'm really a sucker for like sappy, cheesy uh, friendship and people being good to each other kind of stuff. I I'm a sucker for that. So yeah, either way, I thought it was very, very good. If you're a fan of it already, you're, you're going to like the movie. If you're not a fan, if it doesn't sound like something that's for you, it might not be for you. Uh, but generally, I don't know if we're ever getting a season three, so at least for now, I wouldn't hate if that's where we ended the series off on. Again, I love that we saw this more from Hana's perspective this time around. That was very good. And, uh, yeah, I also, this is gonna sound a bit mean, a bit negative. I'm glad that aside from just a couple cameos, we didn't really see the one stalker girl whose name I forget and her little sister. I don't even remember their names. But they were the weak point of the anime to me, because it's like, Miyane, Noah, Hinata, and um, Hana all have really established characters, they're really funny, and they have really good character moments. So if you're telling me, oh, there's going to be a new scene coming up for the series, what characters do you want in the scene? I want those four. I want any combination of those four. It's like, okay, well, you have to have other characters than those four then I would say Kanon and Kuyori at least have some stuff going on character-wise. Um, I would say, okay, throw them in. That's what the movie did. Or if we need even more, throw the moms in. The moms, again, don't have a lot of character stuff going on, but I think they're more interesting. Um, but then when you get into the stalker girl and her little sister, her little sister is just characterless moe blob. Oh, look how cute she is. And there's not really much going on there character-wise. So I it's not that I, like, hate these characters, but I'm like, I would rather see any of the other characters doing anything. Um, the same with the stalker girl. It's She's used completely for comedy, and the comedy is a little bit more over the top than what the rest of Wataten's comedy is, because most of it is just, like, 
really just, you know, subtle, just normal. It's a very normal slice of life kind of thing. Uh, but the comedy's a bit more over the top with her, and she doesn't have much going on character-wise, which is, like, why, again, I don't hate those characters, but I do think that they are the weakest members of the cast, so the movie probably benefited from them only really getting cameos and us focusing just on sort of the main, more core characters. Uh, so yeah, either way, that's it, though. I do believe that's uh, all I have to say about this one. Thank you so much for watching. Like if you did like the video, comment down there. Tell me what you thought of the movie yourself, uh, what you thought of my thoughts and all. Subscribe for more anime, much more on the channel. There's a bunch going on. I'm planning to do reviews every time I finish an anime from now on, so that way you know, there's going to be a lot more anime stuff on the channel in addition to the stuff I'm already doing. Uh, so also, I mentioned before, I'm going to be leaving my Annie list down in the description. So if anybody's curious about what I am watching, uh, what I might be finishing soon, you can go there, of course. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. I said all of that. If you want to help support the channel, or if you want to link to the Discord server, we can talk there. Uh, me, everybody else is down there. Just ask and I can give you a link. If you'd like to help support the channel, just Drop a super thanks down below if you'd like to, if you'd like One Piece a bit early, if you'd like um, to just know you supported the channel and also get a shout, <clears throat> sorry, a shout out at the end of every video. Uh, you can join down below to become a channel member. You can go to patreon.com slash Haku of the Tubes or a link will be in the description to become a patron. Uh, so yeah, huge thank you to people who are patrons and members. Thank you to Chosen Regular Evan Holly, Magical Girls, FR Nuno and Smeller Dog, Cheriton Student, David Langstaff, Slayer Candidates, SG and Stan Cedar, and Pure Element Pate Ardeallo. Thank you all so, so much for your support, and thank you all so much for watching. Um, and I'll see you all next time.